Hi, I'm Johnny and you're watching The Hexy Beast. And on today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing this game right here, The Isle of Cats. Anyway, let's get this one to the table, shall we? And this is The Isle of Cats. Let's take a look at the back of the box, shall we? The Isle of Cats is a competitive card drafting polyomino cat placement board game for one to four players. It supports solo and family play while offering challenge to the most experienced gamer. You are citizens of Squall's End on a rescue mission to the Isle of Cats and must save many cats as possible before the evil Lord Vesh arrives. Each cat is represented by a unique tile and belongs to a family. You must find a way to make them all fit on your boat while keeping the families together. You will need to manage resources as you explore the island by drafting cards Rescue cats, find treasure, befriend Oshaks, and read agent lessons. Each lesson you collect will give you another personal way of scoring points, in addition to filling your boat and keeping your cat families together. Okay, so the first thing we do when starting a game is to take this island board, make sure it's on its red side, and place it in front of us. Also, don't forget to put Vesha's ship on space number five. Also, choose one of these player boards. And for the sakes of this game, I'm just going to go with the green one. Also make sure that this is on its red side, as denoted by here in the corner. Okay, now that we've set up our boards, it's time to get the tile bag sorted. So let's go do that now. Okay, the first thing we want to do here is take all these white Oshax tokens, these tiles, and randomise them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay them out in a row above the board. Just like this. And this is important to lay them in a row because throughout the game they will be called out by numbers 1 to 6. Then we take all the tiles of each colour and all the gold treasure tiles and add them to the bag provided. Just like this. And don't forget, give them all a good shuffle. So now it's time to draw our starting market tiles from the bag. And we're going to place four on each side. So first we're going to go for this, we got one purple, we got another purple, that's interesting, we got a red, and we also got a blue. Okay, and now we're going to populate the other side, these ones will cost five throughout the game, they cost a few more fish, and we'll talk about fish in a minute. So we're going to draw some more, we got an orange, a green, another orange, and we're going to have a red as the fourth one. Now, take five each of these common treasures and place them nearby the board in easy reach. Now, we're going to take each of the different coloured cat meeples and put them into supply piles. As well as that, we've taken these green basket tiles and we've also taken some of these currency tokens. These are fish. This is a single fish and these are five fish. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of these and give it to ourselves. Put it on our board. So I'm just going to put that up here, ready for when we need it. We use these to play cats in the game. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to take all these blue cards and we're going to basically put them all shuffled up into a supply pile near the board like so. So now it's time to set up our solo player. And in this game, we're going to be playing against our sister and our sister is actually going to score points for our board. She's basically going to take credit for our work. So, because we're playing in easy mode, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these advanced solo lessons. Um, we're then going to take these solo colour and lay them in a line above. We're going to take the solo lessons and the solo baskets, and I'll show you what I'll do with them in a minute. Okay, so first we take these solo colour cards, give them a bit of a shuffle, and I lay them out in a line of five. One, two, three, four, five, and then we flip the first one. Then we're going to take these solo lesson cards and we're going to shuffle them up and deal three in an easy game. We're only dealing three, so we're going to deal one, two, and three. And these are basically going to be end game scoring conditions um, for her. And then the last thing we're going to do is take our solo basket lessons, these things, and we're going to lay, we're going to shuffle them up and put them down next to our board. Just give them a shuffle and put them off to the side. So now, what I'm going to do is I am just going to take one each of these just to represent the play order and I'm going to go green and I'm going to have my sister go purple. So we're just going to place them on these top spaces of the island. They're going to have my sister go first 
and then me. Okay, so the game is going to be played in in five phases. And the first phase is going to be fishing, second explore, third we're going to read our lessons, the four we're going to rescue some cats, which is how we get tiles, and five we're going to do our Oshaks and treasure cars just for the rare stuff. So first let's have a look at fishing. So this is fishing, the simplest part of the turn. And basically all that happens is that we get 20 fish to spend on stuff throughout our turn. Now let's move on to the explore phase. Okay, so the explore phase is how we get cards. And in a multiplayer game, normally you would draft these, but in the solo mode, we don't. We have a way of simulating it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw five cards. So that's one, two, three, four, five cards off the top. And we're gonna choose to keep three. I'm gonna take this one, this one, and this one. Then we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna take five cards and take three. Whoops. Um, and the three I'm going to take is I'm going to take this one, this one, and this one, and then we're just going to discard the rest. Okay, now we're just going to draw one more off the top, and this will give us a hand of seven cards. Okay, at this point we now have to choose which ones we're going to keep. And we do that by spending the cost labelled in the top left corner in fish in order to keep them in our hand. Hmm... So I've chosen to keep all of them, so that's 16 fish is going to cost me. So let's spend our 16 fish, and as you know these are fives, we've got 20, so we're just going to get four fish change, like so. So that's one, two, three, four, change. So we've paid for our cards, and that is the end of the explore phase. Now we're going to move on to the read lessons part of the turn. Okay, so this is the read lessons part of the turn, and if we look in our hand, all lesson cards will be blue. So we've got this lesson, which means we now place that out on the table. This means at the end of the game, put a lonely cat on our boat. That's a cat that's not in a family, and I'll explain families when we get to cats. Um, this basically means you're going to get one point per lonely cat on your board. Okay, so now we're on to the rescuing cat phase. And the first thing we're going to do, because purple is first in our turn, turn order, is we're going to draw the top card of this solo basket deck. And let's take a look at this. This... First of all, we'll have the amount of baskets they'll draw, which means they're going to draw another three face down cards right now. And they're also going to take cat three and an L shaped common treasure. Um, this is important though, because we have a speed stat here of four. Um, if we have a card that has a higher speed value than four, then we will actually go first. So first let's draw them out. And looking through my deck, the highest basket card I've got with regards to speed, is this one here, which has a three speed, which means my sister is actually going to go first. So this means that she's going to take the third cat in the row, which is this red one over here. So she's going to take that. She won't score for it, but she'll take it away from us. And then she's also going to take one of these L-shaped treasure tiles. Once again, she won't score it. She'll just take it away. Okay, so it's my turn to rescue cats. And the way I would do this is if you look here on the board, there's a cost. There's three for cats on this side and five for cats on this side. Um, but we've only got four fish. And this is my basket token. So the moment I draft a cat, I will flip this to its used side. So I think for our first cat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this and take this purple. That's going to cost me three fish. Like so. So let's stop and talk about the solo... Um, color cards for a minute because basically each time we go through a round she's going to flip one of these over so for now she's going to get five points for every green cat I draft so basically as we go through this one will be worth four points this one will be worth three points two and one so anyway let's get back to placing that purple cat okay so this is our first placement and the rules of placement are simple especially for the first cat you can place them anywhere you want on the board and for this cat I think where we're going to start is by here, because as you can see, we've got this little little map icon. This will mean that we can take a common or rare treasure when we cover it. And we're just going to cover that up like so. And I think I will actually take this two common treasure. Put by there, just to cover that gap of the room. Now, it's our sister's turn again. Okay, so she's going to switch cats one and six, and then she's going to claim cat two. 
These icons don't matter after the first card is drawn. Okay, so she wants to switch one and six and then claim two. So we've only got six tiles left and because we drafted two, it means that this is one and this is now six. So we're gonna switch these two and then she's gonna take cat number two, which is this blue here. Now, back onto our turn. So looking at our hand of cards, I think the action we should take should probably be first things first. We're gonna we're gonna need to play this so that we got another basket. So we've played that, and then we're gonna use that basket to take this Oshax card. So these two will get discarded, and I'll get to take any of the Oshax tile at the top. You know, I think I'm gonna take number four because it has a nice straight edge that we can use next to our purple. So let's do that now. Okay, so the rules for placement are simple. Basically, your first cat you can place anywhere, but any other tiles you place from now on have to be orthogonally adjacent, which means either here, here, or here, or here, etc., um, in order to be scoreable. So for our first, we're gonna put our O-Sharks down. And one of the important things about the O-Sharks is that they're kind of like wild cats, no pun intended. And you can choose which color they are when you place them. And because you need three or more cats together in order to qualify as a family, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this Oshax a purple Oshax. Now to see what our sister's doing again. Oof, she's going to take cat seven and Oshax two. So because there's no cat seven at this point, she's just going to take the one on the end. And because she wants a second Oshax, she's going to remove this. Okay, so as of right now, there isn't really anything we can play because we don't have the fish to play it. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next phase for the rear finds. And as it's my turn, what I'm going to do for my rear finds is I'm going to play this. Which basically says I can take any rare treasure or take two common treasures. And as there's no rare treasure has been drawn from the bag yet, basically when we're drawing cats, if a rare treasure comes out, we'll place it underneath. But as there's none been drawn yet, I'm going to take two common treasures. So I'm going to do that now. So the ones I'm going to pick is going to be this line one here and this L-shaped one here. And the reason I've chosen to do that is because with this common treasure in this spot, I've actually completed a room. And completed and incomplete rooms at the end of a game will actually deduct five points from your total score. So as well as that, I'm going to place this L-shaped one by here to cover as much ground as possible. Although this doesn't leave us much options to turn this purple into a cat family, which is also worth more points. It's also worth mentioning at this point that the rats on your board are also minus a point at the end of the game. Okay, so it's the last turn of the round and our enemy is gonna take cat five and rear treasure four, but there's no rear treasure four. So she's just gonna go take cat five away. Okay, so that ends the first round. So first thing we'll do is reset everything. So we'll flip our basket back over um, we'll replace all the tiles drawn in the middle. The O-Shacks will actually stay missing throughout the game. So we'll pick these up and draw new ones. As well as that, we're going to move the round tracker forward one. So as you can see, we've only actually got five rounds to save as many cats as we can. So, let's draw our tokens and get on with the next round, shall we? Okay, so we're just going to deal the tiles on the left. Oh, first one's a treasure. So we'll place this underneath instead. And if we draw another one of the same kind of uh, rare treasures, What's going to happen is that this is going to stack. So we've got one, we've got a, uh, a red, a blue, a green, and another red. And for this side, oh, we've drawn another treasure. So that's going to go by here as well. Um, so we're just going to draw those other four cats. And here they are. Also, as part of moving on to a new round, we're going to flip this next card over. So this means now that every purple we draft will get her four points. And looking at the board, it doesn't seem like that's very good for us. Okay, so now back to fishing phase. That gives us another 20 fish to carry on with. And now we're back to explore phase. One, two, three, four, five. And which ones are we gonna keep? I think we'll keep this one. And let's have a look what we got, because we still got baskets. We'll keep these two uh, and one of these anytime cards. And then we're going to do the same again. Draw five and keep three. 
And I think, as always, baskets are useful, so we're going to take these two baskets off top. And another anytime card. And then we're going to draw one more. And now we get to keep, pay for what we keep. Hmm, deciding which ones to keep. Okay, so we definitely want to keep these two basket cards. Um, discard any two played lessons to gain a permanent basket. Unfortunately, we've only played one lesson, so I think actually this turn, let's have a look, is this a partial basket for us? Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually only going to pay to keep these, which will cost us five fish. So we'll do that now. It's five fish. We're going to skip the read lessons phase this turn, as we had no lessons to read. And then we're now going to go back to the rescue cats phase. So we're just going to draw again to see how many things we got. Oh, only one. So that is no speed stat. So let's see what I've got. Um, yeah, so I've got high speed, which means I'm going to go first. To denote that, we're just going to move the green cat above the purple cat on the round track. Okay, so seeing as we're going first, and we definitely don't want to be getting any green or purple cats, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spend... Five fish in my first basket in order to take this orange cat over here. Okay, so now we're going to place this cat, and I think the best place for us to put it to get rid of some rats would be by here. This does mean that this map is going to be a little bit harder to cover, but seeing as we're not really wanting to draft any green cats, I think we'll be fine. And now our sister is going to take cats five and four, which in this case is this green one. And this red one. So let's do that now. Okay, so now it's back to our turn. So remember that green cards always play in the rescue cats phase. Blue cards are always lessons. And these will always come at the rear treasures phase at the end. The rear finds, as you can see, phase five. So right now, we've got plenty of options. Um, first thing I think we should do, though, is use these partial baskets in order to create one basket so that we can buy another cat. Okay, so I'm going to spend another five fish in order to uh, make sure I get this other orange cat over here. So let's do that now. And looking at the current state of our boat, I think the best thing to do would be to actually spawn this orange cat by here. Okay, so because our sister only actually had one card to draw, that means she is fundamentally passed on her turn, which gives us the chance to do some more work on our boat. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend another one of these cards in order to get me this blue cat over here for three. Um, so this blue is now going to go adjacently by here, I think. So that will be for three. So I'm just going to spend the fish. And I'm just going fish everywhere. And because now... She doesn't get a turn again. We've still got one, two, three, four, four. I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually spend another one of these cards to get the red in the number one spot, which is this guy. So he's going to be worth three as well. So we're going to spend the other three fish we just got back. And we're going to place this guy. Where should we put him? Where should we put him? I think we should place him um, by here. Seems good enough for me. Okay, so now we're just going to Move on to our rare finds phase. And in the rare finds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to uh, pay one fish to take any two common treasures or to get any two small treasures for free. And I'm just going to take the two small treasures option. So that's going to get me this one by here, which I'm going to use to block a rat. And it's also going to get me this double by here, which I'm going to use to block two rats in this space. Okay, as normal, we're going to reset everything. Move the boat along, and as well as that, we're going to turn over this round three card. And to be honest, I think this is a good point as any for me to uh, back off and just basically go tell you what I think of the game. So let's just catch me at the table, shall we? Okay, so now that you've seen how the game is played, it's time for me to tell you what I think. First of all, for aesthetics, I've decided to give this one an 8 out of 10. Um, this is mainly because I find that these tiles are very colourful and very interesting to look at. I think the art design is really wonderful and I enjoy the way the cats look. Um, the only thing that I would say would let it down a little bit is that the boat itself is quite a basic shape. But apart from that, it's great. So for aesthetics, it's gone 8 out of 10. Now, we're going to be moving on to gameplay. And this is where I think the game really outshines itself. Because the way it handles drafting. Um, I think that your sister is actually scoring points on your own board is actually a really great way to keep the tension going. 
It also means that you have to think strategically about what your sister is going to be able to score for round to round. I also think the way it handles card drafting, although a little fiddly, is actually very good in the solo game. So you would draw five cards, keep two and so on. You would do that twice and then take a card for a hand of seven. And I think for a card for a game that relies so heavily on drafting, that is actually a really neat mechanic to make it work for solo. Um, so for gameplay, it's also got an eight. Um, now we're basically going to be moving on to the accessibility features. And I feel this is the only place where the game kind of slipped up a little bit for me. Because although the game itself is actually quite simple to play and easy to follow, I found when I was initially learning from the rulebook that I wasn't quite understanding some of the concepts. Um, I, I got the phase order mixed up a little bit and the way I was taking turns with my Automa deck, the basket cards, were a little off. But obviously after I watched some videos or whatever, I was able to catch back up with that. So that's the only reason that um, for accessibility it's got a 7. And that brings the total score of this game to a grand total of 7.6 out of 10, which is a perfectly respectable score. I definitely think this game's going to be making it back to my table. And as my son gets a bit older, I think this will be definitely one I'm going to try as it does have a family mode. But anyway, I've been Johnny. You've been watching The Hexy Beast. If you like what you see, feel free to smash that subscribe button up there. Check out another one of my videos up here. And all that's left to say is, stay hexy, everyone.